if we think of it on a continuum, remember that there are times when we really have to stick up for ourselves. And there are some times when we just choose our battles. Today we're talking about communication styles. Please stay tuned till the end because we are going to share some great resources that are tailored specifically to different people's needs. If you like this video, please hit subscribe and you'll be notified when we do have our new videos coming out. Generally, when we look at communication styles, there are three main ones. There is the aggressive, the passive, and there is the one in the middle, and that's the assertive. So let's start by looking at the aggressive type style. Remember I'm saying I'm using person first language. It's not an aggressive person. It's a person with that type of style of communication. Important to separate the person from the behavior. So a person that had, tends towards having a more aggressive style, it's unfortunate because they may get what they want, but it's at a pretty high cost. They put their own values ahead of other people. All they want to do is get their own idea across. And it might sound like it's a great way to be because you get what you want, but the cost is pretty high. We devalue others, and in so doing, it does impact our own self-esteem as well. The other type of person that we talk about is more of a passive person and that person will agree to pretty much anything, they'll just go along for the ride and people say, oh they're such a nice person, they're so agreeable, but it's alright to do that from time to time, but to have that as your main go-to for communication makes it very difficult. It devalues you. It puts the other person in a one-up position. Um, it affects our self-esteem. It makes us feel less than. So it's not a great way to approach communication. The other problem with being more passive is it can lead to what people refer to as passive aggressive behavior. Passive aggressive behavior can be a subconscious thing or it can be something people do then they're actually conscious of doing it. So a passive aggressive thing example would might be that you forget to do something, you forget or you don't put your best foot forward or you don't produce the best project. If we're doing that we tend to hold back a little bit and we don't give with a glad heart. If we get to the point where we're so passive that we can't give to others with a glad heart then we can switch and become more passive aggressive. There's some really big examples of that in literature. It's something that often will be part of a storyline. One of the ones that I remember quite clearly is in a book by Pat Conroy called Prince of Tides. And in that story, um, the wife has been experiencing some very aggressive behavior from her husband. And so her passive aggressive behavior comes out in that she prepares him what he believes is a delicious stew. In actuality, she's prepared a can of dog food for him. That's the ultimate form of passive aggressive. She purposely did that. So be aware of that. If we're not able to give with a glad heart, then we must be giving in a passive way. It can cause problems at work, it decreases job satisfaction. Someone that is um, passive may end up talking about people behind their back because they put up that front where, oh yeah, everything's fine, I love to. And then they go home and they complain to their partner or they speak to their friends and they say, you wouldn't believe what's going on at work and what they made me do. So be really careful about that. What we want to do is cultivate a more assertive way of communicating. And if we think of it on a continuum, remember that there are times when we really have to stick up for ourselves. And there are some times when we just choose our battles and we say, I'm not, okay, whatever you want, it's not really that big a deal for me. I can give up on my position for that or I can go along with the flow. But what we generally want to do is be in that middle ground where we can share with people what we're thinking, what we're feeling, 
and express ourselves so they know what our ideas are. And that way we can come up with a situation or an answer to our problems that will achieve more of a win-win thing. So it's not everybody going towards that one person's idea, but it's figuring out where can we figure out the common ground and arrive at things that are going to work better for everyone. Assertive behavior does help us with decision making. We understand more fully what everyone thinks and feels, so we're more likely to be able to accommodate needs. If the passive person is not sharing what they're thinking or what they're feeling, then they can't expect to have their needs met. So we want to be able to share that. If you're the type of person that does have more passive tendencies, things that you can do is practice. Remember that these behaviors that we have, this style of communication is learned behavior. That's great. We learned it. We can unlearn it and relearn. We can learn a different style and be able to sprinkle in something else so that we get into a more balanced position. So if you are someone especially that has that more passive tendency, then go ahead, stand in front of the mirror, practice. How would you say this to someone so that they can hear you? How would you be able to communicate in a way that your position is shared, um, but you don't feel like you're stepping on people's toes? So it takes practice, take some little steps. Also practice saying no because the more passive person is more likely to say, oh yeah, sure, I can do that. Yeah, yeah, just put another thing on my plate and your plate gets so full that you can't possibly do everything. So what we need to do when that's going on is sort through and decide where can we say no. A good place to start is with our friends and our family. Practice saying, no, not right now. I'm I really, it's too much, I can't do that. And you'll be surprised how quickly people will understand. They might be taken aback at first because they're used to you saying, yeah, bring it on, I'll deal with it. But it's not good for everyone. They're going to get um, probably not the best quality work or the best done and you're not going to feel good about doing it if it's too much. So practice and have a party line ready too. And now that you've decided you're going to be more assertive, then be ready when you think maybe someone's going to ask you to do something at work or you know you have a friend that will ask you to do something that you really can't manage doing right now. Figure out what the party line is going to be so you're comfortable sharing that when it comes up. It's really hard to do the first few times but you want to be able to manage that so that you can, as I say, give with a glad heart. You may like to have a look at a book by Susan Cain called Quiet, which deals with looking at more introverted personalities and how the more passive communication style is validated. However, there are things that we can do to express ourselves in ways that can be more readily received by other people and make us feel more comfortable about sharing. If you have more of an aggressive type communication style, it may be helpful to take a step back, to do your breathing, to do your relaxation techniques in order for you to be in a calm place so that you can actually stop and listen to the other people around you. To remember that their ideas are valid as well and that to listen to them is very respectful. It's also going to make them more willing to share with you and when people are more willing to share with you we're going to all benefit because it's going to be a better project if it's at work it's going to be a more harmonious family if we present in an aggressive way then it cuts people off it shuts them off it keeps them afraid to share their ideas so if we start presenting in a more approachable manner then we can shift that and people will be more open to sharing. They may be taken aback a little bit at first, but you may even want to share with them that you're trying to shift your communication style and you would like to be 
more assertive and less aggressive. You may find it helpful to look at a little workbook called the Anger Workbook by Lorraine Bilodeau. Excellent resource and it will enlighten people on what anger is all about, what it cause of it is. It's a great resource for people that tend towards more aggressive behaviors and expression. And it's also a great resource for people that are supporting or friends or relatives of people that do have that more aggressive style of communication. Another great resource is a book called Interpersonal Living by Gerard Egan. It's really written for more of group study and for therapists, but we often recommend it for people that are interested in changing their communication styles and their dynamics within groups. The quote that I like from that book is, assertive behavior allows for emotional ventilation, but leaves the doors of communication open. So we're not only are we, in, when we're being assertive, opening those doors of communication, but we're also allowing our pain, anguish, concerns, all of those things to be vented. Remember, these are all learned behaviors. We can change anything that we have learned. It's the desire to do so. There are lots of resources out there to help us. Keep on learning. It's a wonderful journey that we're on to improve our mental fitness. Thanks for watching and take care out there.